Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the 57th FITSI Congress being held here at the University of Salford in Media City, so welcome. Uh, my name is Nigel Lynch. I'm Professor of Telecommunications at the University and have been heavily involved with the organisation and planning of today's Congress. So if anything goes wrong, blame me. <laughs> I hope you don't have to, but there we go. Um, now, given that I've been heavily involved in the organisation, I've been given the most important duty of anyone involved in the conference. I have to give you the health and safety briefing. So, there are no planned fire drills today. <laughs> if the alarms go, they are audible, that is, they are spoken word, um, and if it asks for an evacuation, we leave the building. We leave the building either through the emergency exit, being shown by my colleague on the left, where it says push bar to open. You go through there, turn right, immediately left and out the fire door. People on the back row, please exit by the door that you came in. Everybody move away from the building into the main piazza area where the video screen is and that's where we assemble. I hope none of this is gonna happen, <laughs> but now you know. Um, may I ask that uh, mobile phones are put on silent, please? We want you to use your mobile phones because we do want you to engage in social media, uh, but we obviously would rather the mobile phone didn't interrupt proceedings. For those of you with uh, Twitter, our hashtag is uh, fitzy.congress. 2018. So do please feel free to tweet and do anything else that uh, you want to do on, on social media. So those are the house... One other thing, sorry, in case you haven't spotted, the toilets are out just on the main corridor that you walked down from the reception area this morning. So they are just on the main corridor there. During the coffee and lunch breaks, there are various technology demonstrations outside. Do please have a look at those. In the far corner um, of the entrance to the building, there's also some posters displaying, giving you a history of this area produced by my colleagues in our industrial archaeology unit. So if you want to know a little bit about Salford and this area in particular, everything back to pre-Roman times, uh, we've got a lovely display there to give you a bit of background of the area. Please do do that. Um, coffee and lunch are served where the coffee was this morning, and there are a number of videos playing there from our various sponsors. So uh, there should be plenty to engage you whilst you're having a cup of coffee, cup of tea, or whatever. So with the housekeeping out of the way, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce our Vice-Chancellor of University of Salford, Professor Helen Marshall, who will formally welcome you to the University of Salford. Helen. Thank you very much, Nigel, and thank you very much for inviting me. Um, this is a, a fantastic event. I'm a, I'm a boring lawyer. In fact, I'm even more boring than just being a lawyer. I'm a corporate lawyer. So <laughs> a lot of this is um, interesting technology, um, but every time I buy a new iPhone, my kids have to come out and help me get it set up. So that's how good I am at this. But what I would really like to do is, is sincerely welcome you here today to Media City and to the University of Salford's campus. Um, it's a real pleasure and a real privilege to host you because I know this is the first time in many years that this conference has been held in the UK and I think the first time in many, many years it's been held outside of London. So it's a real privilege for you to come to Manchester, um, particularly in Salford, to have a look. Um, the University of Salford has a DNA that goes back to the original Industrial Revolution back in the late 1800s. We as a university were created back in the day as an institute of advanced technology to produce graduates with skills to power that industrial revolution. What we're doing now as a university is reinventing ourselves so that we are very, very close to industry again, but producing graduates fit for the 21st century. The speed of technological change is phenomenal. 
What we call Industry 4.0, the fourth industrial revolution, is happening as we stand here now. You just look at our campus here in Media City and look what we've got around us. Look at the opportunities that we are able to provide our graduates when they're learning here in this campus. The internships, the live briefs, the live projects that industry bring here and say, we've got a problem, we're tackling this, can we use your students to help us with it? The students are getting real, cutting-edge, live industry experience from the day they start here. So I have a saying at Salford, working with industry, it's everything we do and the way we do everything. Because we have a strategy which is built around four industrial collaboration zone themes, one of which is digital and creative. And some people think that that means we've got four buildings with four signs out the front that say these are our industry collaboration zones. And I say, no, that's not the way it is. Industry collaboration is who we are. It's the way we develop and deliver our curriculum. So we love working with industry. We've just bought, I haven't bought this myself, I have to add. We've just bought an autonomous vehicle, a driverless car. It's fantastic. It will do 12 miles an hour. We still haven't managed to get it to understand the difference between a, what we call a sleeping policeman in the road and a dead body. So every time it comes to a speed control in the road, it slows down and almost stops because it thinks it's a dead body. So, but it, it's learning, it's how we teach our students to program such a vehicle and all the issues that that vehicle faces. So that's technology, but it happens to be in a vehicle. And the world, and, and that's where we are, and we're, we're just about to invite a, a well, we've, we've just done a, a, an agreement with a German partner who's very um, advanced in the technology around autonomous vehicles to bring some of their learning here and set up an actual facility with us jointly so that the students that we're producing are learning on their technology, their kit, and actually can go out in the world and they're going to get the graduates they need because at the moment they can't find them. So that's the kind of way we work here at Salford. But let's go back to your conference. Um, you're in a space which is moving probably faster than a lot of the technology that's out there in the world. And this year's theme is delivering consumption of digital media. I mean, I, I know just from my own use of the TV at home, I hardly ever watch the TV. I watch mostly on catch up because my life's very busy and you know, if there's a series that I particularly want to watch, Bodyguard at the moment, never at home at the right time, but I do it on catch up, not when it's programmed to happen. That's the way the world lives now and it's going to get ever more advanced and ever more pacey. So it's great that you're here today to continue that journey and to continue that um, development and collaboration around the themes for this conference. We have keynote presentations today from a number of leading industry uh, organisations, Ofcom, BT Sport, BBC Research and Development, with, with whom we do an awful lot of work, uh, Huawei. And added to this, we have a programme of great speakers from industry who will be covering a range of to topics, 5G being one of the most prominent, I think, at the moment. And I know Nigel set up, we've got an experimental zone on the campus, up at Peel campus, where we've got 5G, where we're looking at you know, the impact of certain weather conditions. Done really well this year. We programmed the weather just for Nigel's project. So we had a freezing cold winter and a boiling hot summer, just so that Nigel could test the 5G facility on the campus. Okay. We, we subjected the entire UK to that, but hey, you know, no pressure, Nigel. Um, so, I'd love to welcome you now to our campus at Media City. Um, this is a really good example of how we took a decision to place our campus down here for the subjects that are delivered from this campus because we know just how close we can get to industry just by being here and having this footprint. The benefits it brings to our students are enormous and the successes that they have gone on to have been tremendous and we're really proud of them. So a, this is actually a great example of industry collaboration zone and how we actually collaborate with industry. So welcome, welcome to people from across the world 
Uh, welcome to our colleagues from Bahrain, who we're working in partnership with, Batelco and the Uni British University of Bahrain. I hope you all have a fantastic conference. I've booked the weather for you. It's going to get a little bit sunnier later on. Um, if, you, if you manage to escape, you'll escape the rain that's coming for tomorrow. But have a great day. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Helen. Helen has to dash off to yet another meeting, uh, but we're grateful that she's been able to welcome you all on behalf of the university. This, of course, is the FITSI Congress, and so I'd now like to introduce Professor Andy Valdar, President of FITSI, who will formally open the 57th Congress. He's just fiddling with a radio microphone at the moment, and what gives me an opportunity to do remind you, if it's not blatantly obvious, we are filming this event, um, and the purpose for that is to make the presentations available afterwards for people who are unable to attend and anyone, of course, who wishes to re-watch uh, what we're presenting here. So Andy's ready now. Andy Valdo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my honour as President of FITSI to be giving this address at the opening of the 57th Congress. Firstly, I'd like to thank our hosts, the University of Salford, and the sponsor Pennine, and also our media network operator and industrial partners for making this Congress possible. We have an excellent technical and social programme ahead of us, all taking place in the futuristic setting of Media City. It's amazing that despite the profound changes within the European telecommunications and ICT industry since FITS's foundation in 1961, there have been congresses every year hosted by member countries. This is the fourth congress to be held in the UK uh, the first was in Glasgow in 1990 and twice in London in 98 and in 2008. The UK joined the Federation in 1981 and has been a valued and active national association um, supporting the Congresses and having a vibrant national programme. Of course, today's uh, European telecommunications environment is profoundly different from the national government-owned monopolies operating in the 1960s, which is when I joined. The first substantial change was in the 1990s with the move to the building networks with digital semiconductor technologies, together with the opening up of the marketplace. After that, it was inevitable that we would all experience the move to the digital computer-based world of today. Of course, the word digital is now used by everyone, not to mean ones and zeros, but to cover the use of smartphones, tablets, PCs, uh, access to the web and cloud-based services such as social networks, online shopping, downloading, and so on. So as a result of these developments, people's behavior and the use of the technology has changed. For example, the rise of user-generated video, gaming, and information gathering. So the theme of this year's Congress is to address the various ways media is used to generate content and how it's consumed on smartphones, tablets, PCs, TV screens, etc. And how it's conveyed and delivered over the telecoms fixed and mobile networks and the internet. The Congress will consider these shifts, what these shifts mean for industry. I'm pleased to say that the technical sessions of FITSI Congresses have managed to keep pace with the changes in technology. And it's worth noting that despite moving into the digital age, FITSI still values highly the face-to-face -face engagement between people across Europe uh, who are working in the ICT and the telecommunications business, which is why the continuation of annual Congresses is central to our mission. However, like many membership organisations today, we still have much work to do to ensure the Federation's offerings fit with the modern digital age. 
I look forward to a successful and enjoyable event. In addition to learning from the technical sessions being held, I personally hope to have the chance to meet as many delegates as possible in a stimulating, friendly and social atmosphere. May I offer my very best wishes to the Congress. Thank you very much.